defining a rule lets us see how the coordinates are related. This will also let us continue the pattern and find new ordered pairs. When I'm looking for a rule, I'm not looking from x to y. Right now I'm looking at just the x coordinate. So I'm starting with 2 and looking down to 3. How does 2 become 3 plus 1? How does 3 become 4? Again, that's plus 1. So the pattern for my x coordinates is add or plus 1. So to continue this pattern, I would say 4 plus, oops, sorry, plus 1 would make 5. 5 plus 1 would make 6. And now I'm going to find another rule. There's a rule here for the x coordinates and a rule here for the y coordinates. So now let's look just at y. How does 1 become 3? That's plus 2. How does 3 become 5? Again, plus 2. It's a pattern happening here. So I'm going to continue the pattern and plus 2 two more times to continue building my order pair. So 5 plus 2 would get me to 7. 7 plus 2 gets me 9. So now instead of just these three order pairs that I started with, I now have 5. Well, we can take these two rules. By the way, this one was add 2, right, for y. I can take these two rules and now looking from x to y, turn them into ordered pairs and plot them here on a coordinate grid. This lets me see the pattern. I'd already done the first three that we started with, so I need to finish and fill in for these next two. My next order of pair needs to be 5, 7. So 5, 7 would be here. And last I have 6, 9. So 6 here, 9 here on the y-axis. And what you see is that these points are actually lining up. And had I brought a ruler with me, I could do this better, but let me try to do this neatly. You can see that when you connect these points, it makes a line because the same thing is happening. The pattern is happening. When I'm looking at my first coordinate, or my first ordered pair, 2, 1, to get to my next one, I went over 1 and up 2 on the y um, axis. Right here, I could go over 1 on the x axis again and up 2 on the y axis, and sure enough, that gets me to my next ordered pair. This pattern continues over 1 on the x axis, up 2 on the y axis, over and over because as these patterns continue, the numbers are going to be related in the same way. Alright, this time we're being asked, what are the first three ordered pairs? So I have two different rules here. Rule 1, start with 0 and add 3 to each term. Rule 2, start with 0 and add 6 to each term. My strategy is going to make a chart, and I'm turning rule 1 into my x coordinate and rule 1, in, or excuse me, rule 2 into my y coordinate. So back to, again, I'm going to read, start with 0, add 3. Okay, so if I start at 0 and add 3, that would be 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 would be 9. Every one I added 3 to build my first coordinates for that rule 1, or I'm just going to call it x. Okay, rule 2 said start with 0 and add 6 to each term. Well, again, start with 0. This time I'm supposed to be adding 6, so 0 plus 6 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. And what I've created here is a chart of ordered pairs. My first ordered pair would be located, my first point, 0, 0. My second point would be located at 3, 6. My third ordered pair is located at 6, 12. And last, I have 9, 18. So simply by filling in these two rules, I've created ordered pairs. All right, this problem needs two charts to solve. I have a coordinate grid here with some points located on there. And the question is asking me, how would the location of each of the points change if the patterns for both coordinates instead begin at zero? Well, if I'm looking for how a location would change, the first thing I really want to understand is where are the points located now? So I'm going to start this chart here and find the pattern for the original. Well, I'm going to come back to the pattern. First, I do just need to write down where these points are located. So my first point is located at 1, 2. My second point is at 2, 
four. Third point is at three, six. And my last point on this coordinate grid is located at four, eight. All right, well, it says find the patterns in the original points. So again, I'm looking at just x coordinates first. How does one change to two, two change to three, and three change to four? Well, that's by adding one each time. So my rule for x is going to be add one. Looking here at my y's, two change to four, four change to six, six change to eight. How does that happen? Well, that's plus two. So if my rule for my y coordinates is plus two. Well, it says how would the location of each point change if the patterns were both instead begin at zero? Did this pattern, did these two patterns, I should say, begin at zero? No, they began at one and two. So the change is coming at the beginning. They are going to begin at zero for both coordinates. That's why I filled in a zero for x and a zero for y. Well, now I needed this rule because I'm gonna, going to continue that. I need to plus one. So zero plus one would be one. One plus one, two. Plus one, three. Plus one, four. Okay, my rule for y was add two. Well, instead of starting at two, it told me to instead begin at zero. So here I am at zero, and I'm going to plus two. Well, zero plus two is two. Two plus two, four. Four plus two, six. Six plus two is eight. So I have my ordered pairs again. Let me draw these lines in here. That might help you see them better. My first ordered pair should now be at zero, zero. Let me use a different color. So it stands out. Okay, so here's my point now located at zero, zero. My next point is to be located at one, two. One, two. Well, I'm going to trace this one because I already had a point there. It's not my first point anymore. My first point is down here, but I should still have a point in that same location. My next point is located at two, four, two, four. Again, same point, just same point being used, just this time it was my third point. And then three, six, again, drawing a circle around it because I need that point again, as well as needing four, eight. So the question was asking me, how did the location of each point change? Well, each of the points that were in this original pattern continued to be on my second pattern. The only difference is this point right here located at this origin, zero, zero. And so the only difference in this pattern is that my first point is located in a different spot, zero, zero, instead of at one, two. Now we're going to take a look at corresponding terms. This one asks, how are the corresponding terms related? Well, corresponding terms are the numbers from each pattern that are in the same position. So I have a chart here. We'll come back to that. Let's read our problem first. It says, Caitlin and Riley each came up with a number pattern. Each girl starts her pattern at zero, but Caitlin decides to add three each time, while Riley wants to add six each time. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to fill in my chart first. K, of course, is for Caitlin. And so it said each girl starts her pattern at zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put in zero for birth, both. But it says Caitlin decides to add three. So zero plus three would be three, plus three would be six, plus three would be nine, plus three would be 12. While Riley wants to add six each time. Okay, now she started at zero, but then it says add six. Plus six would be 12. 18 plus six is 24. All right, now again, back to the question now that I have all of that, my information. My corresponding terms here are 0, 0, 3, 6, 6, 12, 9, 18, 12, 24. So I read those together because those are examples of corresponding terms. And it says, how are the corresponding terms related? Well, I don't see much of a relationship right here. It looks like it's the exact same term since it's 0, 0. So I'm going to look over here at my next set of corresponding terms. Well, 3 compared to 6. I know that 6 is 2 times 3. So 3 times 2 would be 6. I want to see if that happens every time. And it, happens, it works here. Does it work on my next set of corresponding terms? Would 6 times 2 be 12? Yes. 
or about 9 times 2 equal 18, and 12 times 2 equal 24? The answer for that is yes, both times. So how are these related? Well, Riley, Riley's number is 2 times more than Caitlin's every time. Now, you're saying, Mrs. Hudgens, does that work here? Well, yes, because 0 times 2 is still 0, right? But I wasn't able to identify how they were related until I moved to numbers here that were different from each other. Now, I told you that Riley's is two times more than Caitlin's, but we could also s describe it from Caitlin's point of view. Caitlin is half, because six divided by two would get me down to three. So Caitlin, if we're dividing by two, we're dividing something in half. So Caitlin's number is half of Riley's, and does that work every time? Let's check and see. 12 divided by two would get me six. 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 24 divided by 2 does get me Caitlin's 12. So, two ways to describe it here. I can say Caitlin's number is half of Riley's, or Riley's number is two times greater than Caitlin's. This time we were looking at how these terms, these numbers, and similar positions were related to each other. In your math journal, I would like for you to solve these problems and bring them to class tomorrow.